Hi everyone, welcome to part two of this tutorial on Blender and Meshroom. In this tutorial, I wanted to bring your attention to a new feature of Meshroom, which is the ability to make HDRIs for your 3D renders. HDRIs are very important in producing realistic lighting in CG renders. If you haven't already stumbled upon it, HDRI Haven is a great website for free HDRIs. I definitely encourage you to visit the website yourself and check it out. However, there might be scenarios where a generic HDRI doesn't cut it for your particular scene and you need to make a HDRI of a specific environment for your project. Meshroom can now do that for you. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what each property in each of the nodes does. I'm just going to show you one workflow that worked for me and some of the important properties that are worth changing from the default workflow. I first took some photos of my backyard using my Sony RX100 Mark II camera. It has full manual control with automatic bracketed shots, meaning that if I hold down the shutter button, it will take three photos of three different exposure levels. You can do this with your own camera if it supports manual control. If it doesn't do automatic bracketing though, it will just take you a little bit longer. You just need to take photos in each direction with typically at least three exposure settings. To do this, I'd suggest putting your camera into manual mode, aim your camera towards the sky, and increase the f-stop value to get a deep depth of field, then set the ISO as low as reasonably possible and adjust the shutter value until you get a good exposure for the sky. You don't want to overexpose the part of the image which is going to be providing most of the important lighting information for your scene. Once you've optimised those settings, you just need to take three photos from each angle, one using your optimised exposure settings, another with the same settings but with the exposure time lowered by one setting and another with the exposure time increased by one setting. It's important that these three exposure brackets are the same for each angle, otherwise you'll get unnaturally bright and dark areas at different areas of your HDRI. In my case, I use three images with plus or minus 0.7 EV or exposure values. Make sure that you use a tripod as well so you get the same image at three different exposures. If you're interested, there are a few apps for your smartphone that can do this as well. I've read that an app called Camera Pixels is one that possibly supports multi-bracketed raw image support. Basically, you want to take three photos with three different exposure settings at multiple angles so you cover a 360 degree field of view of the sky and the area around you. You also want to make sure that you have a decent overlap between photo sets so Meshroom can stitch them together. And also, try and make sure that you have a few objects in each photo to assist in the reconstruction process. Once I had taken my photos, I then used Affinity Photo to rescale the resolution down to something like 2000 by 1500 pixels, but this is probably still too high for my application. You don't need a very high resolution and it just increases the processing time a lot. Just be aware that this can be a very slow process depending on your graphics card and you do need a CUDA enabled graphics card for this to work. You can also just do this with one photo per angle, but you won't get the dynamic range or realism that you might expect from a HDRI, but it still might help improve the accuracy of your lighting in your scene if you mix it with some artificial lights. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to load up Meshroom. Next, once you've got it open, you want to go File, New Pipeline, Panorama HDR. And this generates a new node diagram or pipeline for generating HDRI images. The next thing you want to do is to bring in your images that you took of um, the, the area of sky or that you're trying to reconstruct for your HDRI. So I'm just going to navigate to the directory where I'm keeping these. I'm just going to drop and drag these photos into Meshroom now. And that just takes a few seconds. Okay, so for the most part, this you can pretty much leave the default pipeline as it is. But one setting I did find in particular was on this LDR to HDR sampling node. Now if you click on this, you can see you've got these properties here. One says number of brackets. So I took three different exposure settings from different angles. So you can just increase this up to three and it also increases the automatic number of brackets up to three as well. And there's lots of other properties here that you can change and you can hover your mouse cursor over each of these and it gives you a brief description of, um, of what these settings do if you do want to change them. I'll also mention the LDR to HDR merge node here, you've also got the option of choosing which of the uh, exposure images, the three images you took, you want to use for the final HDR. So if you hover your mouse cursor over here, it says if you use zero, it's going to use the center bracket and you can choose either the first, second or third one that you want to use. So I might just use the, the zero bracket. 
because that's the one I optimize my settings on. And also just finally on the last tab on the image processing node, you've got this option for output file extension. So by default, it's set to EXR, but if you want to, you can change your HDRI image to be a PNG image or a whatever format you like. So now that you've set all those settings, you can just go file, save as, and you want to um, create a, a project for this. So if Meshroom crashes during the reconstruction process, it keeps a record of the outputs from every node. So you can go back to that step and you're not wasting any extra time. So I'm just gonna call this HDRI2. And then once that's saved, just click on the first node here, camera initialization, and then press start. Go make yourself a cup of coffee and see you in a few hours. Okay, so we're back and you can see you've got green on all the nodes now, indicating that it's gone through the entire pipeline out to our image processing node. You'll also notice here on the left hand side, every third image has these little, uh, this little camera icon saying it's reconstructed that successfully. Now if you zoom in here on the 3D viewer, you can see we've got a point cloud. These are some of the features that it used to, to um, align the images and reconstruct the camera angles and it's made like this 360 degree view here. And it's also reporting that it used 70 different camera angles. So that's indicating that it used about 210 different images to make uh, this scene. Okay, so once that's finished, uh, if you just minimize it now and go to your um, project directory, it'll create this folder called Meshroom Cache. Double click on that. And then just bring up Meshroom again quickly. So it's going to save the output into a folder called image processing. So let's just look for that. Image processing. And let's have a look at the date here. So I'm just going to open this one. And you can see it's made a HDR image here called Panorama. So let's just open up Blender and see what that looks like. Okay, so I've just got Blender version 2.92 here. So I'm just going to go over to my wall properties. I'm going to click the little yellow button next to the color here and select environment texture and press open. Navigate to the directory where it saved the panorama. So I've got panorama.exr and click on that. And then just press viewport shading. And there you've got it. You can see the HDRI image in the background with, of my cube. And you can see you're getting different lighting levels, different parts of the scene. And you can also adjust the brightness here and see the effect that it has on there. Okay, just to see how you might use this HDRI image in another scene, I've just created this simple scene here with my meerkat that I generated in my last Meshroom tutorial. Be sure to check that out if you've missed it. So I've got my textured uh, meerkat here. I've got a plane that I've just used as a shadow catcher. So I've if you go here to this object properties with the plane selected, go visibility. In the ray visibility, you just want to make sure you've got the camera and shadow ticked. That means the plane won't be visible in the render, but it will still capture the shadows, which will be applied to the background image. You create the background image by going to your camera, camera settings, background images, and I've just selected one of the photos that I took when I made this HDRI from one of the angles. Then you can adjust the color space. Linear worked quite well for me. And I think that's all you have to do there. Then I'm just using cycles here. And then if you press rendered view, and there you can see I've got my rendered meerkat here in the scene. And the plane's capturing some of the shadows here and embedding it within the background image, which if I toggle it on and off, you can see I've got my HDRI in the background and I've just overlaid um, one of the images on top. And it's using that HDRI to illuminate my meerkat here. But I've also got a point light here in the background just to produce that um, sunlight effect on the back of the meerkat. You can see what effect the environment texture is having. If I bring the strength of my environment map down to zero. So you can see now we've only just got the light from the point light behind. So let's bring the strength back up to three. So you can see the HDRI is doing a really good job of just adding a little bit more realism to the lighting in this scene and making it look like the meerkat kind of belongs there within the photo. You might find that if you try and do this yourself that the HDRI image doesn't align with the, the camera background image. So to fix this, let's just turn off our camera background image and we've got our HDRI now in the background. 
then if you bring up a new window here and go to your shader editor, go to your world properties, I've just added these two extra nodes here in the workflow. So I've got a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. So you can add those by going shift A, S and typing texture coordinate and pressing enter and that will add a texture coordinate in. Do the same thing for the mapping node. So connect them up as I've shown here and then you can just use these rotation uh, sliders here just to rotate your HDRI just so that it matches um, your background image. I'm just going to undo that. So you can actually go to your camera settings here. Then if you turn your background image back on, you can use this opacity slider here. So you can go back and forth between your HDR and your background image. And then you can just play with these rotation angles until you get a better alignment. And that's looking pretty good. So let's just increase the opacity back up. Let's go back into cycles and let's do a final render. That's it. So it looks like it's done a really good job of just adding a little bit more realism to the scene. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and you'll start using it for your own projects in the future. If you liked this tutorial or any of my others, please don't forget to like them and subscribe to our channel. I'll be releasing new Blender related tutorials in the coming weeks. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.